In a strategic mode to bolster its defense capabilities amidst the growing threat from the China and Pakistan, India procures an advanced unmanned aerial vehicle of the year race from domestic manufacturers, emphasizing a shift towards indigenization and reduced import dependency. In a bid to strengthen its defense capabilities and reduce reliance on the imports, India is actively procuring a Drushiti 10 Starliner, a version of the Hermes 900 medium altitude long endurance EOA, jointly manufactured by the Elbit System Limited and an Indian defense company. The Global Data's latest report says that the global military UAV market from 2023 to 33 highlights that India has set to invest $12.8 billion in the various categories of UAVs with a substantial 70.4% and mark for the male segment of the UAV. Ongoing procurement signifies a strategic move by the India to promote indigenization and empower the domestic private players in the defense sector. Global Data, a leading data and analytic company, emphasizes that this approach responds to an escalating threats posed by India's neighbors China and Pakistan. India's defense initiative aims to reduce import dependency, promoting domestic manufacturing across design, R&D, testing, and production in defense. The private players, spurred by the Indian government initiatives, invest in manufacturing defense equipment to meet the armed forces' needs. Established companies and the new entrants actively participate in the ship forming joint ventures and acquiring stakes in companies specializing in the defense technologies. An Indian aerospace and defense analyst at the Global Data points out that acquiring the Russia T-10 Starliner UAE goes beyond the national security concern for India. The UAEs are expected to enhance the Indian maritime forces' capabilities to monitor shipping lines and mitigate piracy risks. This became particularly evident in early January of 2024 when Indian Marine Commandos successfully conducted a rescue operation in the Red Sea following the hijacking of the Indian naval vessels by Somali pirates. The defense analyst further highlights that procuring modern UAV system like Rishite 10 is vital for the securing regional interest and instrumental in the developing a robust domestic supply chain. This strategic move ensures the deployment of UAVs and continuous supply of spare parts during the combat, further fortifying India's defense infrastructure. As India pivots towards uh, strengthening its defense capabilities through indigenous means, requiring advanced UAV signals a uh, response to external threats and commitment to fostering a self-reliant defense ecosystem. So what do you think? Will this new self reliant thing work for the Indian defense industry? The Indian Defense Minister to take an army proposal for the Indian Army to make light tanks to deploy the India China border. This will be a proposal for buying 354 light tanks according to the Indian media. The Indian Army has issued specifications for its future light tank, which has been named as Zorawar. The tank has been named after the general who led the multiple victories in the Tibet, which is now controlled by the Chinese PLA. The Indian Army officials have said that, to overcome the limitation faced by the medium battle tanks and equip the Indian Army for all the contingencies in the high altitude areas, the marginal terrain and the island territories besides its utilizations in the plains, semi-deserts and deserts it is now important to induct the light combat tanks. The Indian Army had to induct a considerable number of T-72 and T-90 tanks in operation areas, gaining tactical surprises over the adversary and thereby forcing the adversary on a back foot. However, the tanks were primarily designed for the operations in plains and desert terrains having their limitations when employed in the high altitude areas. They face a similar handicap when employed in the marginal terrain of runoff catch of India, an official said to the Indian news media agency. Amid the ongoing conflict with China, the Indian armed forces are now going to acquire 
Prale ballistic missiles, which can hit the targets from 150 to 500 kilometers, along with the light combat tanks. The proposal moved by the Indian Defence Forces is at the advanced stage and is scheduled to be taken up for the clearance during the high-level meeting this week, according to the Indian news media. The proposal is also important as it comes at the time when the Indian forces are working on the creation of the rocket force which has been in discussion at the highest levels in the Indian Defence Ministry for a long time. Recently, the Indian Navy Chief Admiral stated that they were already working on the creations of the rocket force to counter enemies on the border. The missiles were successfully tested twice on two consecutive days last year in December, and since then, the forces are working towards its acquisitions and induction. With a range 150 to 500 kilometers, Raleigh is powered by a solid propellant rocket motor and other new technologies. The missile guidance system includes state of the art navigation and integrated avionics. Prale is a quasi ballistic surface to surface missile. The advanced missile has been developed in a way to able to defeat the interceptor missiles. It can change its path after covering a certain range in midair. As such, missiles have a tremendous capability to warn troops to destroy or take out enemy air defense sites or similar high value targets. The Prale missiles, along with the Brahmos supersonic cruise missiles, would be the longest range tactical weapon system in the Defense Forces of India, as long as their range strategic weapons are controlled by their strategic forces command. So what do you think? Will India will be inducting so fast with the tanks and the missile system to cover its entire China border and the Pakistan border with India? India has intensified the fighter operation in Ladakh, with frontline jets carrying out increased sorties, including night operations, as the Chinese Air Force has embarked an aggressive defense exercise across the border in Tibet. According to the Economic Times of India sources, fighter aircraft, including Rafales and Su-30 MKI fighter jets, have been operating in high frequency from Leh and Thiaz airbase for the past few days from India. Even as the People's Liberation Army's Air Force has activated its air defense network and is conducting a large-scale exercise involving its combat jets. On the Indian side, night flying is being undertaken with enhanced frequency. As there have been instances of Chinese fighter jets probing areas close to the contested zones in the eastern Ladakh. In an instance, a Chinese fighter jet flew close to the contested area around 4 a.m. in late June triggering a response from the Indian side. The incident did not escalate into a bigger crisis as the Chinese combat jet did not breach the border. Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching, this is WC Daily. Think big, think different. Bye.